Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad and this is Coach Pro. Today's video, we are doing jump on, jump off with Steve from SDS Supercoach, mate. How are you going? Yeah, I'm going good, mate. Good to be back again. This is the debut of Jump On, Jump Off for your channel. So pretty excited for this. That's the way. Should be a good one. So we've actually found it um, by going to players, as you guys can see here, and go trade in and trade out. So number one target we'll start off straight away is Settlefield. Uh, this one come from the woodwork. We weren't sure if it was just a one-off sort of game, but it looks like he's backed himself with inside and outside ball. He's averaging about 123, I think it is. And he, uh, he might even be a keeper, Steve. So obviously for me, this has to be a jump on. What about yourself? Yeah, this is a jump on for me. I think if you can, I think you certainly need to try to find a way to get Will Settlefield into, into the team and it's well-deserved. He's getting 90% CBAs. Well, he had 90% CBAs last week. Like, he, he's just so important for that S in midfield. So, I'm getting him in this week. And, uh, yeah, jump on if you certainly can. Yeah, sweet. And number two on that list is LDU. Um, I think he's only jump on if you've got someone like a Jack Steele that's done his shoulder. But I wouldn't be moving him sideways for a Clary or anything like that. It'd be purely just an injury in the midfield and you got some freed up cash with a trade boost, but I'll, I'll definitely still say jump on for Uniac. He looks good this year. It looks like his breakout year and he's got not a bad fixture. So what do you think of that one, Steve? Yeah, jump on as well. If you can though, because unfortunately I'd love to get him in, but unfortunately I can't do it. Um, if you have a player like Jack Steele, uh, maybe even a Jack McRae who's just really underperforming, uh, he, he bloody split. Oh, I, I'm sure we'll get to Jack McRae at some point, but he, he spent, Bit of the third quarter at full forward, which is just ridiculous. So, <laughs> I think, um, I think, uh, yeah, LDU, if you can get him in, uh, you should try. I reckon he can do 110 plus this year. Uh, he just looks unreal. And yeah, he's got a good matchup this week if he doesn't get tagged by McGuinness. So, jump on if you can. I wouldn't ruin your whole entire structure to get him in, though. Yeah, true that. And uh, number three, I feel like an idiot. I said, uh, I didn't say jump on last week to Dacos, and it looks like I'm going to have to jump on myself and eat my own words. So, seeing what this guy can do, I probably won't rave into it too much. I mean, 22%, sorry, 9.9%. It'll probably be closer to 15% of people will jump on before the round starts, you'd think. And I um, just think he's more important to jump on because if you don't, he'll be an antipod. So, if he wasn't highly owned, I probably wouldn't be going there. But I think he's he's obviously looking like already early days, you know, D1, D2 at this stage, Steve. So definitely jump on for you as well. Yep, 1,000%. Get him in because this is the cheapest he's going to be all year, I reckon. Uh, he, he hunts for the ball. He takes kick-ins. Even if he's trying to get tagged, uh, he's still getting eight or nine touches in a quarter while doing so because he can just outrun any tagger in the comp. The only few that could probably actually have a good chance of stopping him would be McGuinness, Ryan Clark, and probably Ed Kerno if he's still in Carlton's side. So I think, yeah, Nick Dacos, I'd get him in a 1,000%. If you're looking for a premium, he's the bloke to go after out of everyone else. Um, I, luckily, I own him. I, I, I brought him in last week, and he delivered a 149, which is just beautiful. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd jump on. All right, so the fourth one we've got, um, Kay Chandler, um, is obviously a cash cow, so he's probably more if Flanders or uh, Ruin or someone's stuffing up and you need to make some cash. I'm not sure if he's fieldable this week against Sydney. Um, I you could almost wait a week if he goes does go up 50 60k, but then from uh, round four onwards, they got a good fixture, so you can almost see what players come back. So I, I feel like not a, as important as Economist Kenner saying the back line where you know he's best 22. He's definitely a jump on, um, but I wouldn't be sideways in uh, playing one like a green for a channel because you, you know, you're you going to make faster money, but I don't think it's worth a, tr a sideways sort of trade. But if you've got an underperforming um, mid price, so that's where I'd look at. What do you think for number four? Yeah, uh, Chandler's a jump on because he's... I think this is going to be an issue for a lot of owners. I think a lot of these players that everyone's bringing in is a jump on, but it's we've only got three trades this week and not everyone's going to have all these players. And if you do have all these players that are being traded in, then you're obviously in a brilliant position. So, um, yeah, Chandler's a jump on. Um, I think his job security is, pretty, is very good for the time being. 
I think they would drop a bloke like Judd McVee for Pickett or whatever the case may be. So I think, yeah, jump on Chandler. He's a cash cow. We need him. I'm. If you've got Campbell Chesser, and if you can, if you have the DPP to do so, then I'd certainly look to swap that. Um, yeah, I, I think Chandler's a jump on. Yeah, no, that's a good point actually with Chesser. Um, number five DC. Uh, we're seeing a lot of Sean Darcy trades. I'm, I'm considering it. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do, but um, I think he's only versus Stanley and Lysett who aren't. Great Ruckman, so that's my only worry. He versus Nate this week, and Nate isn't the best tap out Ruckman, but he'll sure go toe to toe around the ground because that's what Nate's best at doing. So I think you've probably got one more week to look at it if you're specifically doing a Sean Darcy, but I certainly wouldn't be downgrading any other Ruckman um, apart from him. So I think it's really that must be more of a niche trade. What do you think for that one, Steve? Yeah, if, you, if you've had enough of Sean Darcy, um, I'd jump on. I think Cameron just presents too much value and the ruck split isn't as bad as what we thought heading into the season for Darcy Cameron. My one concern is uh, we we don't, we need to remember that he did have not a full preseason. He did have a a couple of hamstring issues and whatnot. So, um, and I think you mentioned as well in the preseason games, you, you thought he didn't move particularly well either. So, um, I think that's one thing to monitor, but if he can put in a, if you're holding off one more week for Darcy Cameron, he's got Toby Nank Curvis this week, who, let's be frank, he's a better ruck than uh, Reese Stanley and um, Scott Lysette. So I think that's a proper challenge for Cameron. If he can stand up, then I'll, I'd be sold enough to go from Darcy to uh, Sean Darcy to Darcy Cameron. Even if it's just a side swap. If you did it this week, then you'll probably save yourself about 100K. But I, I, I'd wait one more week on Cameron. But I'll jump on still if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, number six on the list is Zebul there. Um, I think he's definitely a jump on. He looks like he's a potential keeper there. He'll also get backline status so you can trade out one of your backline rookies, chuck him back, and he can be your D4, D5, where he ends up. And I think he is a keeper. Um, we are discussing off air actually before if we think Hall's role will affect him, but it looks like long-term we... He's probably a keeper as he was two years ago, so it doesn't look like Clarko's going to chuck him forward. Um, knowing Clarko, when we all bring him in, he probably will. But um, yeah, I think he's a keeper at that price too. I, I still don't mind paying four hundred thousand, but I don't want to pay any more than four fifty for him. What do you think for Zebul, mate? Yeah, jump on. I think uh, I think he's uh, I think he should be a bit higher up this list. To be honest, I think he's just a bloke that. We've got a real chance of having a of having a keeper at three hundred and fifty six k. Uh, I'd certainly look to find a find a way to get to him. Um, I think, yeah, I just think I don't think he'll be as good as he was in twenty twenty one. Like that was just ridiculous from Zebul. But um, I think I still think he can average between one hundred to one hundred five, and that's pretty pretty good value for for a potential keeper. So I think Zabel for sure jump on. I think he should be a bit higher on the list. Yeah, no, I agree. Number seven is English. Or, yeah, this I'll jump on. Um, obviously, depending who for. But it's got to probably be a Sean Darcy thing or maybe a, a Riley O'Brien or someone like Gorn, obviously. Um, I forgot about Gorn. But, yeah, I can see why people would bring him in. They probably want more of a, um, a security that he's going to score a lot better than Darcy Cameron. My only concern and the only reason we didn't start him is purely because he's very injury-prone. So if you had Roland Marshall as R2, um, R1 as English would really scare me as well. So unless you got Darcy Cameron as your F6 or whatever you got him as in the forward line, you can sort of swap him around into the ruck to cover, I wouldn't be doing it. But um, I can see why people are jumping on. So I would just say jump on to all of them so far. What do you think for English? Um, I guess I'll be a bit more controversial. I wouldn't jump on. If you want a bloke for... I feel like it's almost... Um, I don't know. Because, like, English, I feel like, is a ticking time bomb, to be honest. Um, if you want to... Well, I mean, I guess if you want to chase chase the points nice and early while Tim English is uh, n- not injured, 
then go for it. But I, I don't see a world where uh, English you have to trade. I think I think at some point owners will have to trade English out at some point this year. I think I don't think he'll stay healthy for all twenty three games this season. Um, if you want to go for a bloke and save a hundred. 115k, I'd go Darcy Cameron and take that risk instead. Um, if you want to get the points nice and early, but I think it'll almost cost about two trades all in all if you do bring in English, one bringing him in, one taking him out. So um, if, you're, if you're looking pretty good on the trade front, I'd do it. But I, I prefer, if you're going to bring in a ruck, I prefer Darcy Cameron if you're going to go for more the cheaper side, if you want to go for someone around English's price, I, I prefer Jared Witts personally, um, just because I think uh, Witts has had a full preseason. He's the solo ruck. So is English to be fair, but I, I, I do concern about, uh, I do have the concern about Tim English as a, as a player that's going to stay healthy. If you want to chase the points nice and early, then sure go for it. But I think he could get injured pretty early still. Yeah, nah, fair. That's our first disagreement. So the sub the other day that was commenting, he'll be happy that uh, <laughs> not on board with something. So um, <laughs> yeah, I thought it'd be different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, Sheezel number eight. I think he's probably the must-have rookie. Um, with scoring like that, that's insane. We haven't seen a rookie do that. I don't think ever that I can ever remember. He's a no-brainer purely based on role. Um. I don't have any discords that I'm in, so I didn't know this, but some guys like um, JD and Anno and all this had people at the game uh, before round one se- seeing him wind up at half back. If I had known that as well, like some of these discords that these channels run, I would have also been on the inside and uh, yeah, started this bloke, but I thought he was going to have a forward role. So if you don't got him, I- I'd definitely get him ahead of any of this list. I think he should be number one on that list. Uh, I assume he's not number one on the list because everyone has him, so... I was the idiot that brought him in last week. So definitely jump on. What do you think, Steve? Yes, yeah, same. I had to bring him in last week. Do everything in your power to get Harry Sheasel in your side. Um, I won't say too much because I don't think much needs to be said. Get him in. Uh, dismantle your entire side to make <laughs> sure you get this bloke in because... Uh, I mean, maybe it's a bold... Uh, it's not a bold call. If you, if you don't have him after round two, then... Um, you're not winning super coach this year. Yeah, I probably agree. And same with any idiots that don't have Connor McKenna like um like myself. <laughs> I'm because of Yo. I'm gonna blame Yo for my whole side all season. So yeah, McConnor's <laughs> a must have. His best twenty two as a rookie. He's averaged, you know, close to eighties in the past anyway. And and that was at a team like Essendon. No offense, Essendon supporters, but um yeah, he's gotta be like I just watch him in the games. He does go missing for periods, but he's still got that um, ability to be in like um, score assists and whatnot, and that gets his points going like a lot. He always sends it inside fifty as well, so he's he's a no brainer. I'm trying to scramble some of these rookies in my side, and and a lot of people like yourself and and me uh, have like four players we need to get in with three trades. So yeah, he's a, he's a certain one. What do you think, Steve? No brainer. Yeah, jump on, get him in. Um... He's a fieldable option. He's going to make a lot of money. He's best 22, clearly. Um, yeah, get him in for sure. Jump on. And the last one for me, um, Brendan Cox. I don't, I've don't. i seen his name on the papers and I don't know nothing about him. I'm going to say jump off. I, as not as Don't bring him in is what I mean at all. I uh, think it's just... I can't say the word. Is it a normal? Or normal? I'm not even going to say it anymore. But no, <laughs> <laughs> I just players just love playing kick to kick and it's not obviously winning them games so they've got to change something in that back line they can't be playing all this switch stuff so I don't think it's something that he'll retain and those coaches jump on are probably the same ones that jumped on Rampy so Rampy went 150 then 82 last week so that was brilliant to see so I think it's the same sort of pattern where Cox is going to just average around 80, 85 and you'll be like why did I even bring him in so that's just chasing points. Even though Dacos is chasing points, at least you know it's it's role dependent. Whereas Cox, you're just never sure with the Freo back line there. What do you think, mate? Um, I might be a little bit more controversial. I don't mind it. He scored one he scored one thirty plus in the preseason, he scored one fifty plus and then one thirty. Um I'm not against it if you're if you've but this is if if you or 
this is if you've already got Dacos. Make sure you don't worry about Cox if you make sure you've got Dacos already in your side. But I don't mind it if you want to be a little bit different. Um, and if it might be the for, formula to, I guess, jumping ahead of the crowd. Like, no, everyone this time last year, everyone was laughing at uh, Jack Sinclair being a premium. I reckon this is almost somewhat similar with Brennan Cox. If you want to be different, he's going to make money very quickly. Um, and if if he doesn't turn out to be the player that we thought, then uh, if he doesn't turn out to be the player that you thought he could be as a potential top eight keeper, you can just swap him uh, to another premium that, I mean, prices are changing after this week. So uh, there's going to be players like Sicily, Dawson, that are just going to drop down in price. Stuart might come back. Uh, in a in a couple of weeks' time, so you know what, jump on. <laughs> I'm just being controversial at this point. That that comment really got to me, where I can't agree with everything you say. So, uh, you know what, I thought I'd take a different little step there. Yeah, yeah you've done it a few times. <laughs> I'm sure old mate would be happy with that one. So, yeah, I hope he appreciates it. I will. Um, it's good to have feedback. It can try to. Constructive criticism, that's what it's called. We're good at taking that anyway, so it's fine. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with it. Just be respectful, that's all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> out, Fife, uh, I can't imagine any bloke would start this, but um, I was going to start him too, to be honest. I'll just give you a shit. <laughs> I've got a shit ranking at the moment, so I can't really talk. I know that's going to be brought up, but yeah, Fife, we should have seen it coming, but he just looked all right, and I think we based it on his fixture, so he's definitely a jump off, even if he's named this week. There's better options at his price, Steve. What do you think, mate? Get this fraud out of your team. I, I, I can't be stuffed with this bloke. Now, this is my fault for starting him. I was chasing fixtures. I thought St Kilda were going to be pretty average this year, but turns out they're going to be – they look like they're going to be half all right. But then uh, it's it's going to be like, you know what? It's all right. Um, no, no, sorry. Let me start again. All right. We get, he's going up against St Kilda round one. We all thought St Kilda would be a bit average this year. They're actually half all right. And then he bumps out and scores a 26. And that was the most frustrating thing I've ever seen in my life. But we got to remember why we picked him. All right. We're picking him because there's a North Melbourne game coming up. How good. All right. This is what we've been waiting for uh, as owners. Here we go. He's going up against North, who uh, we thought might be uh, bottom two again. Laid out. What an absolute prat. Get this fraud out of your team. I can't um what a what a player he's been over the years, but yeah, he's never touching a super coach team once again uh, never again in my life. So no. Nah, jump off, please. Oh, Do no, me a favor. At least he's got a brown eye, so that's the main thing for him, I guess. Two. Oh two, yeah, right. Okay. I've been living under the rock. Yeah. No, no, all the respect for Nat Fife, but uh he just did my head in those first two rounds. Yeah, no, nah, don't blame me. I'm just stirring the pot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chessa, this is uh, one that sort of sucks for most people. I didn't jump on at the start because I sort of saw the scoring ability that he did have and I thought he's just gonna, not gonna get, uh, not enough time on ground and the wing roll in a side like West Coast didn't appeal to me. So a lot of people got stuck on this because there was not enough rookies at that, at that price. But I was saying about not sidewaysing any rookies, but he's the one I can actually see justification for, especially if you're missing a McKenna or a Chandler or someone big that you really want, even a Hollands or something like that as well. So what do you think, Steve? Jump off. Dead dead rookie. Um, he's clearly, unfortunately for West Coast, he's clearly not to, up to uh, AFL level at this stage yet. He might be, become a rookie for us uh, maybe next year, but he's clearly not ready yet. He, obviously that, Ankle injury is, is certainly still holding him back a bit. So, yeah, jump off. Max score number three, he's definitely a jump off. It's a four to six week injury there. Um, he looked like he almost done an ACL the way he was sort of sitting in a room. So that was a bit sad for old mate. But, um, yeah, it turns out it's a medial instead. So it's definitely a jump off. It's more who you're going to go to. So, yeah, don't need to speak too much about him, do we? Steve, what do you think? Jump off, obviously. Yeah, jump off. Go to Wits or Cameron for him, I reckon. Or English. Nah. <laughs> nah, I prefer the, prefer the first two. <laughs> uh, 
Number four, Flanders, uh, just absolute. Yeah, no good. Just a couple sixties or fifties or whatever he's been producing. He's definitely a jump off for whoever you want. Just yeah, what do you think, mate? Board pocket for the Suns, who look crap again. Uh jump off for sure. Um no, nah, no good. We thought um he'd be getting a little bit more CBAs. I think he had like fourteen percent CBAs last week against the Suns. No, uh, against the bombers. I don't really care. Uh, get him out. There's there's a lot better opportunities out there. You got Zebel, you got Setterfield, you got Warpool, um, uh, you got players like that. So yeah, another shocking starting pick for me. Get Flanders out. Uh, better opportunity out there. Yep. Well, that's Gold Coast website for you on their uh, feed. They were hyping this man up all season, all preseason. So we got all sucked in. Yeah, that. and the, and they're playing him the same roles last year. What's all that about? The best preseason, he had his own personal trainer in the off season, and they're giving him the same role, but because they still want to play David Swallow in the guts, so frustrating. Yeah, no, it's, and, and you know what? If you went to Hawthorne, he'd be their best player. So it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> I, I, I'd love to disagree with you there, but <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um... Next is Jack Steele. Um, you're not made out of steel anymore. Um, that's his shoulder. That's his second or third injury in the last 18 months with that shoulder. Um, he's definitely get rid of. I wouldn't even buy him back in once he comes down in price. I, I think I mentioned a couple of times. I just got to my shoulder in round two when I played a few years back now and came back in round six. And it took me probably three or four games just to get back into it. And even then, I was a little bit worried about the contest. And Steve's no man. I'm pretty fearless generally, but with a shoulder like that, especially if you're playing midfield, you don't really want to go in for it. He's a high tackler. Um, so I just even when he comes back, I'd jump off. And it's probably for I'd be going like a Uniac or someone like that uh, in terms of trading. But you're definitely not keeping this guy, uh, hoping you can use a rookie for four to six weeks because that's just ridiculous. You'd miss out so many points and you won't be getting anywhere near that top 10K. What do you think, mate? Yeah, jump off. Um, you've got to uh, admire the the courage it takes for Jack Steele, who, who's uh, injured his AC joint, and he still played throughout the game and gave and uh, got the Saints a win and uh, gave owners a very solid score. But I think you have to jump off. I disagree with you with um, not jumping him, uh, not getting him back in at all next year. We've got to remember last year how how good of a score he was coming at the end of the season. I mean, so, and yeah, is what I meant. Sorry, jump on uh, back on this year at all is what I meant. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm disagreeing with that because um, we remember last year where he he did the same injury, and when he came back, he was still extremely. He he was still. It took him a couple of games to get in, back into it. Like I guess similar thing with you, but once he did get back to normal, he was such a good scorer. Uh, for the rest of the season. So, uh, oh, oh, he wasn't a great scorer. It wasn't like 2021 Jack Steele or whatever, but um, he he was he was certainly delivering some really solid scores coming into the year. If if he's ever like 520K, I think that would be too good to refuse come the end of the year. But look, we're, we're at round two at this stage. I'd jump off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sean Darcy. Uh, yeah, I'd... If you've got nothing to fix in your side, you're just jumping off. Um, if you've got other bigger problems, you're just waiting a week because he versus ba- uh, Bailey J. Williams, who's don't even know why he's on AFL list, let alone playing ruck roll. So, yeah, I feel like Sean Darcy is one of those guys, if you need to free up cash and you're trying to free up 100K and you want to upgrade elsewhere to a Settlefield, a Warpool, all these places we mentioned before, um, then you do it. But if he's the least of your worries, you know, let's say he's number four out of those three players, then you sort of leave him. But he's still a jump off in this category. What do you think, mate? Agree. Um, if you haven't got that many issues, I'd jump off Darcy. I think I think uh, most of us are going to be using a boost this week. Um, if you don't need to use a boost this week with, uh, with, uh, with your team, then you're in a great position. But, yeah, if you... If, if Darcy's a top three issue for you, I'd jump off. If there's more glaring problems in your side, then I'd hold on to him for one more week. Uh, maybe just cop the price drop um, and we'll see how he goes against the Eagles. If he he needs to, I reckon he needs a 70 plus percent ruck split 
and a very solid score and a good Freo win. Because if all that happens, then I think you can have a bit more confidence in Darcy's had a full preseason. They shouldn't, uh, but at the same time, he just looks a bit. He's just walking around a lot. He's just not doing too much. And yeah, I'll jump off Sean Darcy if you can, because um, I don't think he's going to be a top three ruck coming into the season by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. But at the same time, I feel like I am being a little bit reactionary because it was pretty hot in Perth. But I'm still a jump off anyway. Like he does. We just don't know that he's split between him and Jackson. It's the same reason why we didn't really start Gorn is because we didn't know the split between him and Grundy. So maybe mm. next year we just start with solo rucks like your um, wits is, but we'll just price out of that, unfortunately, because of Yo. <laughs> and also and also, also as well, uh, maybe maybe just try to jump off Freo players because they look pretty average this year and a bit, bit of a tough watch. So if you're not that keen on watching that type of football, then... We want to pick players that we like watching and um, and teams that we like watching. So, look, for me, I'm going to try to not have any Freo players this year. They just look a bit average to watch, and I'm not sure how good they are. Sorry, sorry, any Freo fans that are watching this. How about, but, yeah, that's no, just Cox, how I feel. I thought Cox was all right in the back line there. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Cox. Well, he's the exception. If you need a quick quick cash injection, <laughs> we're already contradicting myself. I'm just stirring you up tonight, mate. I'm I'm whack and sleep right now myself. So uh, I'm no, sure the viewers love it, mate. A couple of couple of uppercuts from each of us. Yeah, pretty much. Agreeing <laughs> <laughs> on everything. So uh, Tanner Bruin is number seven. Um, yeah, we knew his role was good. It's just a time on ground. Um, probably the two most frustrating coaches for super coach would have to be. Uh, Chris Scott and Beveridge, like, what are they doing with their teams? You got talent, and you're just playing them in the in the wrong places, or just too much time on a bench, or just stupid positioning. And Ruin's got the talent, but maybe he just doesn't got the tank that we're aware of. And Chris Scott hasn't mentioned it, but I reckon he gets dropped this week. I'd be surprised if he gets a game. Um, if you got that low time on ground, why are you even playing? Um, he's a definite get rid of. Uh, is it? He might not even make his break even. Who knows with this guy? I haven't looked at his break even. I don't want to touch it. He's already been out of my side. And I'm probably going for a Zeebo or somebody like that or um, a channel, mate. So what do you think of that? Yeah, he's an easy drop. I think he's almost projected to lose money this week. So he's a definite drop. A lot of better opportunities, as I said before, out there like a Zeebo, Satterfield, Warple. Um, yeah, I, I almost wonder whether he's more suited as a, as a, as a high half forward a bit. Um, if you're not going to play him in the midfield. Yeah. But um, I guess I won't doubt the premiership winning coach in Chris Scott last year. So uh, knows what he's doing. Well, maybe not early days. They're on too. But, <laughs> but no, nah, um, yeah, Tanner Bruins an easy trade, to be honest. Yeah, they're about to go 0-3 against Gold Coast. So go Gold Coast this week. Um... <laughs> Are you tipping them? <laughs> no, not, not that. <laughs> uh, eight number... Doherty, um, I wouldn't jump off Doherty. He's got a good fixture coming up. Maybe if we go Dacos, but we know at the end of the round, at the end of the season, normally if you go sideways a premium to a premium, you don't normally accumulate that many good points, especially for proven premiums. Doherty wasn't showing sign of injury. He only had it 20, uh, 21 times. He coughed it up a couple of times with turnovers that converted to goals. That's what actually hurt his score. So I'm not jumping off, Steve. What do you think of Doherty at number eight there? No, I'm not jumping off, but I don't think he's I don't think he's going to be as good as he was last year. Um, I think Zach Williams being out for the year uh, kind of hurts uh, Doherty a bit because I did mention in the preseason that Doherty actually averaged less less without Zach Williams in the team, and he's not going to be he's not going to have him for the whole year, so. Um, I wouldn't jump off Doherty. I'd cop it on the chin. Uh, if he's your only avenue to Dacos, I guess you'd do it. But I wouldn't jump off him. I, I think he's probably, instead of out being out like D3 for the year, he might be a D5, D6 this year. I reckon he goes 130 this week against Giants anyway. So he should be fine. <laughs> Hope so. Yeah. Um, number nine, Finn Callahan. Um, some people are jumping off. I think even you might, you are saying off air, but, uh, I can see why he has hurt his shoulder. I mean, if you're trying to bring in another player, um, that you really need to get to, it's, it's probably a jump off, 
So this is this on 50 50. We've not jump on or jump off or, or any of it really. It's more team dependent. So I can't really make a call. But I watched him the first game, played really well. And then obviously caught that stinger in the first quarter to his shoulder. Um, and then in the last quarter, he actually accumulated a lot of the ball. So I wasn't worried about his role because he then went to a more outside role than what he already was doing. But he picked it up heaps of times. And they reckon he's fine for this week. I'm holding on. I think he'll still average pretty well. Um, but I'm certainly not jumping off. So I'm going to say actually hold for this one, Steve. What do you think? It's all team dependent, but yeah, go on. Yeah, I'm going to exactly agree with you there because all these all these moves and all that is very team depending, uh, dependent. Um, like for me, I'm trading Callahan because he's my ticket to Setterfield, who I think I'd much rather have in my side. I think Callahan, the shoulders are concern. Um, yeah, I think even both shoulders of Finn Callahan's are strapped. Like that's just concerning in itself. So, yeah, I, it's very team dependent. This one, if he's your ticket to set a field, I would do it. He's going to make a little bit of coin this week as well, but I do worry about his scoring long term because uh, uh, I think the last people we should trust. With injury news is the Giants. I think they're just saying, oh, he's fine. But you can never trust the Giants uh, with injury news. So, nah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump off because there's also better opportunities out there if you don't have a set of field, if you don't have a Zeeble. I mean, to be fair, you do need a bit of coin to do that. But uh, if you don't have a Warpool even, surely someone's got a spare 60K in the bank to do that. So, yeah, I'd, prob- I'd probably jump off. Um Callahan, if you could, if you don't have a few of the other mid prices, he's probably going to line up against Hollands on that wing anyway. So that's why I'm not too concerned either. If it was against a tougher wingman like a McCluggage or something like that, I'd be a little bit worried. But I think you'll find plenty of the ball against uh, Hollands type that will play that wing, wing or he'll get be against um, Blake Akers on the other wing. So I, I don't mind that much up whoever he takes. So I, I just like the way he uses the ball and just watching him in that last quarter, although his shoulders were, were, were cooked. He still found it. It's just he couldn't use it because he obviously, I don't know, maybe he couldn't drop the ball properly with those shoulders. But I, I think and he, he, and he can't and he couldn't tackle. He couldn't tackle because of his shoulders. Like I think that's a bit of a concern as well. Maybe we watch the pregame and see what they're saying. He might even be laid out. They might even be playing. So it's for me, it's a hold until it would be more clear. But like you said, if you need to get a settle field and you're trying to find the money, he's probably your option for it. So it makes sense. Uh, last play on that list, Dusty Martin. Um, he's only out for one game, so if you've got good enough cover, I'd probably hold. But I don't know why you even started him in the first place, to be honest. He's a shadow of himself. He hasn't been great really since oh, a little while now, but um, he's got hammy issues, He a lot of off-field things. I don't think he's ever sort of recovered from either. Um so I just think he's, he's probably a trade-out, but you're probably going to someone like a Goulden at the same price. I wouldn't be wanting to go too far down. Or maybe if you miss a Zeeble. I'm sick of talking about Zeeble, but I'd rather go for a midfield forward as well, like a, uh, a Goulden or maybe a, a Canelio or someone you miss, like a Rosie, a Taranto, any of those players for, for Dusty. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's, he is a trade-out. But if you can hold him for one week, like he, he probably won't miss more than one. So... Yeah, I'm still 50-50 with this one, mate. What what about you? Um, yeah, I'm trying Dusty. Um, if you started him, then you probably went more for the name than uh, his actual potential for Super Coach this year. Um, I think you're spot on, though. I think there's some certain off-field issues that he hasn't fully recovered from. I think he used to be very durable, but I think some. I think he's taken a couple of breaks, and I think that has um brought down his uh, training level and I think we're seeing him get injured a little bit more now. So, um, yeah, if you have him, you definitely get rid uh, for like a Golden or a Zeeble if you need to drop the cash. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. so in the end, you are, you are dropping him, but it's probably like you probably don't see him as a top eight, uh, eight forward, sorry, anyway. So the issue that... I don't is- think he'll... He won't even be top 15. No, and I, it looks like maybe that might be the trend where they might sub out players, not that they're necessarily injured, but just their age is starting to get a little bit older, those explosive players. So maybe it's a thing we can talk about in another segment. 
players that we should probably not bring in later in the season, like you, Max Gorns, that might actually get subbed out when they're actually looking close to finals because you don't want to bring them in because you know they're not going to get a lot of time on ground. So that's yeah. a concerning thing because we had no injuries that game. And, yeah, he came off and I was a little bit worried. I saw no ice anywhere on his on his shins or ankles or anything. I think, oh, yeah, this is just a, a time management thing. So a lot of clubs will probably be doing that this year. So I probably won't be touching any players over the age of 29, 30, so, yeah, that's that's the jump on and jump off segment. We'll just do our footy tips and probably get it done. I've got 2 minutes 15 on the clock. So, actually, we, we do. Oh, with... wow. You should have told me. All right, let's do this quickly. Uh, dogs, Lions. Uh, what am I thinking? Uh, lions. Lions for me. Pies, Tigers. I'm going on the Pies. Yeah, Pies. Uh, Hawks, Roos. Roos. Yeah, Kangaroos will win. Giants, Blues. Uh, blues. Uh, all right. Yeah, blues for me as well. Saints, Bombers. I think you convinced me. I'm going to go Essen. Yeah, I'm going Essen. Uh, Port Adelaide, Adelaide. Port Adelaide. Port, yep. Uh, Gold Coast, Geelong. Geelong. Geelong, probably the easiest tip of the round. Uh, Melbourne, Sydney. Melbourne, oh, Sydney. Who'd you tip? Sydney. Oh, I'm I'm going Melbourne just for the home ground. Uh, and lastly, Fremantle West Coast. I'm scared about this one. I almost wanted to West Coast, but I just think Freo surely bounce back, right? Like they're already zero and two, so I think Freo. Yeah, they have to bounce back. Well, uh, jump, jump on, jump off. Episode two, round two. It was good to have you. Uh, it was good to be on the channel, Brad. Uh, thank you very much. Keen to do this every week. Yeah, that no, was good. Good segment. So. Enjoyed it, um, and I'll catch you on the next the next one, I'm sure. Yeah, thank you guys all for watching, and uh, next week's video will be on my channel. All right, catch you on the next. Cheers. Cheers. Did you stop recording? <laughs>